as anybody that works with their hands knows, maybe you work with horses or maybe you work in a garage or something like that, or farming, quite frankly, any manual labor whatsoever, your hands are gonna get dirty. That was exactly the same in the medieval period. So after a day's work, when your hands are filthy, maybe with horse sweat or muck or dirt or whatever it might be, how did you get them clean? I have some ideas, let me explain. First thing you do if you've got mucky hands is, and we've all done this as kids, you just wipe them on the ground. And I'm sure that was done many times. You probably wouldn't wipe it on your clothes though, because your clothes, it's difficult to get them clean as well. So you'd sort of try and avoid that. But wiping things on the ground is perfectly reasonable. The next thing you do is of course, water. You would bring with you some water. It doesn't have to be particularly clean water. You could just scoop this straight out of the well or straight out of the stream. Um, and if you use that, you can just rub the worst of it on your hands and get some of it off. Now, the problem with water is it's heavy to carry. You obviously, if you're going to wash with it, you don't really need it to be good for drinking. So you can use your sort of secondary water or water you've got from a puddle or whatever it is. Um, and it takes off the worst of the muck. The problem is that doesn't actually get rid of all the dirt and it doesn't actually get rid of a lot of grease if you've got grease on your hands. So if you've been working with horses, for example, grooming them, tacking them up, horse sweat and lanolin and all that kind of stuff actually is a bit resistant to water. So just actually using water on your hands wouldn't really work. Now, we know there was soap. In fact, bizarrely, soap is actually a very, very early discovery in human civilization. We think the Babylonians had soap, and from about 2000 BC, there is a recipe for soap uh, written on a clay tablet, a Sumerian clay tablet, which of course massively predates the uh, medieval period by thousands of years. When I use the word soap, what I mean is toilet soap, something that you can use to wash with, wash your hair, wash your hands or anything. But of course, soap technically is a group of chemicals which includes things like greases, uh, includes soft soaps, all sorts of other things like that. The key value, I suppose, of soap is that it dissolves grease and it also dissolves in water as well. So they're the molecule itself actually bonds to dirt and puts it into water and you can wash it away. So any kind of grease and any kind of alkali will react together to create soap. It's a saponification process, which is just a fancy way of saying soap is made. We know there was a particularly fine type of soap that came from Castile, which was white and it was made with olive oil and some kind of alkali, and it was ferociously expensive. Your average working person, your average craftsman, your average washerwoman was not going to be able to afford Castile soap. It was the sort of thing reserved for lords, ladies, and nobility. And if you had Castile soap, you would show it off. There were two other types of soap that were made, in England in particular. There was a thing called grey soap, which came from Bristol um, and was made there, which was marginally cheaper than Castile soap, still too expensive if you're a modest manual worker. There was another kind of soap, which is even cheaper than grey soap. It was called black soap. I don't think it was jet black or anything like that. And it certainly wasn't coloured because adding ingredients like that would have increased the price. And basically I think it was called black soap because it was darker than grey soap. It was available. It was available in towns and cities, probably not in the countryside. It was still too expensive for ordinary people to use. But from about the 10th century, we had soap in England. It's a little bit embarrassing, of course, because they had soap on the continent of Europe for hundreds of years beforehand. And before then, the ancient Babylonians had soap, for goodness sake. So the Egyptians would have had it. All sorts of people would have had types of soap. 
but we know from the records that soap really was only known in the British Isles from about the 10th century. Interestingly, the Romans didn't really use soap. It's unusual. They used a olive oil and they scraped it off their skin with a thing called a strigil. So the Romans didn't actually use soap as far as we're aware. In medieval times, people had to use what they had available. You come in from working in the fields, the water's not doing it, your hands are greasy with something. What else do you have available to you in the medieval household? You don't have raw ingredients particularly, you've got some things. Well, one of the things that's actually quite commonly available in the medieval period is ash. And ash is actually a source of alkali. Uh, and bizarrely enough, well, it's really interesting when I was doing the research for this, alkali is actually an Arabic word which means ash. So in fact, the concept, the word we use for alkali is actually talking about ash. Now this ash itself is, is a hardwood ash. It's got bits of unburnt wood in it. This is charcoal. It's got lots of bits of grit as well. I prob probably think it's probably got some sand and some silica. Um, but it's a very fine powder and this powder itself is quite good for scattering on the ground. Uh, it helps deacidify the soil. If you run water through ash, you get lye and lye is one of the key ingredients of soap making. So throughout the world when soap has been made, it has been made with elements of ash. There are two main ingredients for any kind of soap. You need an oil or a fat and you need an alkali. Uh, which you get from soaking water uh, in ash and depending on how long you leave it, it gets stronger. The best stuff was made of olive oil, that's very expensive. The cheaper stuff was made with animal fat. Now, from the records, it's pretty clear that it wasn't actually the best animal fat that was used. It was probably the animal fat that was left over, that was too stinky, that had gone off. Because there's a couple of notes we have from monks talking about how stinky the soap works were that were in the medieval town and they often had to be downwind of where people were living and that's the same for things like slaughterhouses and tanneries and everything so there's a lot of industry downwind of towns because medieval industry brought with it its own effluence and its own pongs you need ideally to be uh, down water of you so the fresh water comes in or you can drink it and the bad water goes out and flushes through the industrial centers but also you want the smells to be going away from where you're living ideally. Now obviously medieval people probably wouldn't have known that what they were doing is using the precursor to soap making to clean their hands but if you take a pinch of ash and rub it on your hands you wet your hands first, take a pinch of it, rub it in to your hands. The grittiness of the ash helps take away some of the dirt from your skin. And there is an instant saponification action, instant soap making action on the grease of your skin and the grease on your hands. So one needs to get it off quite quickly because it can be quite dangerous. And I wouldn't recommend anybody doing this on a regular basis because the alkali is actually quite aggressive and can badly burn your skin. So if you want to try this, be very, very careful. But what it does do, it has a very strong cleaning effect on your skin. I can feel my hand has been quite nicely degreased. So simple ash and water acts as a very, very efficient cleaner of your hands. So you come in from the fields, grab a bit of water, grab some ash, wash your hands, dry them, or maybe just drip them or whatever, drip them dry, and then you're ready to eat your food. I find it fascinating to think that water and ash actually can clean your hands quite efficiently. You'd probably want to be a bit careful about using it too often because um, it is quite strong and the ash will vary in quality. But basically, you have all the ingredients you need to actually degrease your hands quite efficiently with a waste product from the fireplace and water got from a stream. And I bet you this has been used for thousands of years. And interestingly, I think it's pretty obvious if you were camping in the middle of nowhere and you had 
greasy pots and pans or you wanted to wash something, you don't have, you've got grass around you, you've got plants and things, but if you had a fireplace and you have ash, I think it's almost automatic to want to reach for some ash, use it to rub your hands clean or clean something, swill it away, chuck it away. And it might be that cleaning with ash predates civilization or predates the understanding and the invention of soap. I reckon millions upon millions of human beings have used ash to take away grease without realizing that in fact what they were doing is creating a kind of automatic soap by doing so.